I did my invasive species project on purple leafstreet Africanized honeybees and European rabbit. I did my invasive plant species on purple loose leaf. Its alternate names are Spike Lithum, Sally Claire, and Bouquet Violet. This plant species is native to Europe, Asia, and Northern Africa. It was introduced in the 1800s to North America, to the northeastern part of North America for its medicinal purpose and herbal treatment for diarrhea and other digestive illness. This plant species has many impact on the environment. First, it replaced many native wetland plants. Nearly 44 native species of plants decline in growth in the United States ever since the introduction of this plant in the United States. Also, it does not provide any food or coverage for certain animals. Because of its dense stand, it because of its dense stand, animals such like ducks, black trends, and marsh wrens loses coverage, food, and site for nesting. And also because it's so dense at its stands, it limits open access for water, for open water, for the nestlings. And conceals the predators such as fox and raccoons, which will cause a decline in its prey. Purple loose leaf is currently found in the Midwest and Northeastern parts of the United States. In Minnesota, it infests about 8,600 acres. No, 8,100 acres. And in Ohio and Wisconsin, it infests 12,000 acres separately in each state. And in 163 wetlands located in Connecticut and in a large portion of New York, it is present abundantly. And as seen on this map, the deep red parts of this map is where it is highly abundant. And then as you can see on this map, the pink parts is where it's present. And identification. These plants grows as tall as 1.5 meters. It has 50 stems, up to 50 stems emerging from its space. The leaves are opposite and spiraled from each other and are about two through 10 centimeters long and five to 15 millimeters wide, as you can see on the picture of the leaves. Okay, in the flower, they are purple and rose in color and up to two centimeters across. And each flower contains about six or five petals. There are many measures in keeping this invasive species under control. One of them is uprooting the plant. However, this has limitations. If the plant is uprooted at the wrong time, the seeds will spread everywhere and will cause more plants to grow. And if it's uprooted wrongly, then the plant could grow back. But for a biological control, the USDA has accepted three European insect species. One of them is root mining weevil. Weevil or weevil. And two leaf eating beetles. A chemical control that the USDA has approved of is herbicide glyphosate. glyphosate. And with this herbicide, two techniques are used such as cut stump and foliar treatment. My second invasive species is the Africanized honeybee. 
alternate names are the African honey bee, the killer bee, and the Africanized bee. The Africanized honey bee was first native to Africa, which is pretty obvious dating its name. The Africanized honey bee first was first introduced to the Americas, not just United States, but the Americas, as in South America and Central America, in the 1950s by this Brazilian doctor named Warwick Kerr, because he did not like the performance of the European bees. Well, anyways, because South America and North America are connected, the bees happen to move upwards into the United States. The Africanized honeybee has many impacts on the environment. Firstly, it's a threat to humans. It attacks any intruder in greater numbers than its European cousins, the European honeybee. And since its arrival in the Americas and Brazil in 1950s, it's killed nearly 1,000 people. It also chases its victims almost a quarter of a mile, which is too long of a mile. Okay. Anyways, it also affects the honey industry and pollination. Firstly, it is aggressive. So if the honey keepers or the beekeepers have to deal with these insects, they'd rather deal with more of a less aggressive insect, such as the European honeybees. So because of their aggravating, the bee. The beekeepers don't want to deal with them. Plus, they always abandon their nests, and they're most likely not to survive the winter, anyways. Thirdly, they are a threat to other bees because of their eco ecological dominance. They always are more aggressive to the European bees. These bees are currently found in the United States in states such as. California, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Florida. As you can see in this map, it's largely in the southern parts of the United States because it's connected because the southern part is connected to South America, where they were first introduced. Identification: These bees are three fourths of an inch in length, and it's covered in fuzz, much like a peach, but not really. But kind of like a beach. The color is brown and orange, brownish and orange, and it's black with stripes, like regular bees are. They have four clear wings connected to its thorax. And this picture at the bottom here doesn't look like well any of these pictures. It doesn't look like it has four clear wings, but it does. If you look closely and examine it, and Just look at it. They are four wings there. It has six legs connected to the thorax. As you can see at the bottom picture, it you can clearly see in the bottom picture there are six. Also in the top right corner of the PowerPoint, there are three legs, and I guess you can assume that there are three legs on each side, which are six legs together. In any one of these pictures, you could totally tell that the head is way smaller than the abdomen and the thorax. The stinger is at the end of the abdomen, and these bees, if they sting you, they immediately die afterwards. They have two bug eyes on the side of his head, and. Since European and Africanized bee look very similar, and you can't really tell them apart unless they're like really close to each other, and you can see that the Africanized honey bee is larger in size than the European honey bee. One way to identify if it's an Africanized honey bee is by its behavior. If it's more aggressive and it's likely to attack you, then it's most likely an Africanized honey bee. Control. So beekeepers are trying to maintain a large number of common European honeybees, such as requeening the honeybees, the European honeybee colony, because the African Africanized honeybee usually invades other honeybees 
、um, colonies. The beekeepers usually keep tabs and requeen colonies if possible. Also, because of the threats to humans. There's an increase in public awareness of not to bother these bees or to call an exterminator for bees or specialization person for bees, so nobody could get attacked or injured when they come across these bees. These bees, these beekeepers, handle the bees with smoke and protective gear. The smoke and protective the smoke kind of tames the bees. And a protect, protective gear protects the person. My last and final invasive species is not one in the United States; it is in Australia. This species is a European rabbit. Its alternate names are feral European rabbits and the common rabbit. These European rabbits are originally from the. Iberian Peninsula in southern France. The date and place of introductions to Australia is 1788. But these were the domestic rabbits, and they first arrived on the first fleet. But the wild, the wild rabbits were introduced later. These cute little rabbits, like this one in the background. Are a threat to native small mammals in Australia. They compete for food and shelter with these small mammals, and because of the ecological change that accompany these rabbits, small mammals such as the greater bibley and their pig foot balika are disappearing. Because these little rabbits eat so much, it's not that they eat a lot, but then there's just a lot of them, and they also eat a lot. Native plant species are declining because excessive feeding. Vegetation is being replaced by weed species. Also, there is erosion because of these plant because of these plants being eaten by these rabbits. Soil erosion and loss in agriculture projects are byproducts for their eating. These rabbits. In Australia, are currently found in the southern part of Australia, especially in the sandy, sandy deep soil parts of Australia. This is only in Australia I'm talking about, not in Europe, because they're also found in Europe and also other places. But I'm talking about Australia. These animals can be identified by their long hind legs and their short front legs, like many rabbits. But their ears are point not pointed, but they're straight up and they're very long. If you happen to look in their teeth, in their mouth, they have sixteen upper teeth and twelve lower teeth. And as seen at the pictures at the bottom of the teeth, there are two large incisors on top and two pegged teeth beneath. It has brown orange fur depending on the animal. And it has a pale colored belly, as seen as the picture at the top right corner. It's standing up, and you can see its belly, and it's a pale color than the other parts of its fur. An adult rabbit can weigh 2.8 to 2.3 kilograms. There are many controls Australian use to tame the population of these rabbits. Firstly, they use a lot of biological control. They use myoxma virus, which killed ninety percent of the rabbits in nineteen fifties. But now, since the rabbits became accustomed to this virus, it maintains the population to an average of five percent of the former population size in wet areas and twenty five percent in dry areas. The second disease is more effective in wet areas. Secondly, they use sodium. Fluorescein, which is a poison that produces high mortality rates of the rabbits, nearly ninety percent. Chlorophyll, chlorocrine, and carbon monoxide are used as fumigations to kill the rabbits in its little holes, rabbit holes.